Welcome back to lesson seven. This is section 6.3, trigonometric functions of real numbers. Oh, uh, that was my attempt to capture a cat in our neighborhood that was rolling around. Uh, it was on Easter morning, and uh, I was just, when I looked out there and saw it wasn't a cat, I was really hoping, and thankfully it wasn't uh, a bunny, uh, because my kids would have accused me of stopping the Easter bunny from, from doing her work. So it turned out to be a really ugly cat, uh, actually a possum. Uh, I hate possums. Hey, we're going to be graphing today. Uh, graphing sine, cosine, and tangent curves. Now, we are going to graph them between uh, negative 2 pi and 2 pi, but understand that, that they graph in both directions forever and ever and ever. But we're just going to look at a small window here uh, of each graph uh, between negative 2 pi and 2 pi along the x-axis. So let's start with y equals sine x. So we've got some things here. Uh, you see the graph, uh, the domain is negative infinity to infinity and the reason the domain is negative infinity to infinity is because you can put anything you want in for x on the sine curve and when you hit sine it's going to return a valid y value now that's domain is x values range are the possible values of y that come back and no matter what you put in for x you will always receive a y value between negative one and one and this graph shows it look as we graph uh, y equals sine x we are pinched between negative one and one that's it for the y values. Um, and again, this graph goes in both directions forever and ever and ever. However, we're only looking at the small window between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Let's go to period. Period right here means one full cycle. And I like where it crosses the y-axis because I say, see how it's going up through the y-axis? And I follow it until it goes up through the y through the x-axis, excuse me, again. And that distance from 0 to 2 pi represents the period. And so every 2 pi radians, you're going to see the exact same thing over and over and over again. So this is y equals sine x. Now next will be y equals cosine x, and it's going to look really familiar. Here we go, y equals cosine x. It pretty much looks the same. The only difference is it's offset a little bit. So this is y equals cosine x. Domain is still negative infinity to infinity. You can put anything you want into the uh, in for x here and hit cosine. You'll, re you'll return a value. The range is, again, negative 1 to 1. Those are the y values, negative 1 to 1. And the period is 2 pi. I like where it crosses the y-axis up here at a max. And then I follow it until it, oh, there it is again. And then I can read the period right off of this thing right here. There it is, 0, 2 pi. So our period's 2 pi. Next up is y equal tangent x. And this is the odd man out of these three. And you can see it's very odd. Uh, here I'm looking at it. And we have these vertical asymptotes here at negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And what that we're talking about with vertical asymptotes is that the um, we're, we're having a z division by zero error. And if you remember from earlier in the semester that if you try taking the tangent of pi over 2, tangent being sine over cosine, that you're taking 1 divided by 0, and we can't divide by 0. So the domain is a little nasty. We'll never ask you to reproduce this on an exam or quiz or anything. Uh, it's all values of x except <laughs> positive or negative integer multiples of pi uh, added to pi over 2. So again, that's not the big deal. There's an infinite number of values that we can put in for x. We simply can't put in negative pi over 2, pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, or any pi multiple added onto that. The range is a little different. Remember, the range between with sine and cosine was negative 1 to 1. Look at this. This thing goes all the way down to negative infinity and goes all the way up to infinity, and it keeps repeating itself. So the range is negative infinity to infinity, and the period is different also. Look, the period is pi. From here to here, you see it all, and then it repeats itself every pi radians. And that's your tangent curve. All right. Well, now we're going to start asking you some equation questions. We're going to say find the value of x or find the angle that makes it a true statement. So I wanted to start out here by looking at the pi over 3 angles. We always start at 0 right here, and then we count. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 is a good resting place, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and we're back to 6 pi over 3. So those are the pi over 3 angles, the 60 degree angles. And remember, pi is 180 degrees. That's why pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Find all values of x in the interval 0 to 2 pi that satisfy the equation. So we want to know all values of x between 0 and 2 pi in which the cosine is a half. So we're only looking here between here and here where cosine x equals a half. So I've got the cosine curve here in front of you. We're only looking between 0 and 2 pi along the x-axis. By the way, there's an infinite number of answers for this equation. There's a limited number between uh, 0 and 2 pi, however. 
And a half is right about here. And if I were to draw a line right straight across there, as I just did here, if I draw a line straight across there, you will notice that I intersect here and I intersect here. So if I could come down here and find this value here, I would know that value of x that makes that a true statement. And the same thing happens here. And it turns out it's 60 degrees, pi over 3. That when x is pi over 3, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Now, cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So I need the 60 degree angle over in quadrant number 4. And if I look, right there it is. It's 5 pi over 3. So my two answers are pi over 3, that's this one right here, and 5 pi over 3. Now, we don't expect you to pull out the graph every time you're going to solve one of these. You know, you really, we really want you to know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. So that you're able to answer these. And really, it just comes down to um, which quadrant are we in. You notice here we're in quadrant 1. Down here, cosine is negative in quadrant 2. Down here, cosine is negative in quadrant 3. Up here, cosine is positive in quadrant 4. If I would have made that cosine x equal negative a half, we'd have been down here, and we would have picked the 60-degree angle in quadrant uh, 2 and the 60-degree angle in quadrant 3. Eh, but I didn't ask that, did I? Here's the pi over 4 angles. Again, we start at 0. We go pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. Now, the ones I have circled are the real pi over 4 angles. These quadrantals are just placeholders as we go around the circle. Find all the values of x in the interval 0, 2 pi that satisfies the given condition. We want tangent of x to equal 1. So I've gone ahead and drawn a 1 across here. Again, we're only looking between 0 and 2 pi. And we notice it happens twice. It happens here in quadrant 1. Here's quadrant 2. It's not happening here. Oh, there's quadrant 3. It's happening right there. You should know that the tangent of 45 degrees is, is 1. So we have an answer in quadrant 1. 1, which is pi over 4, quadrant 2, and we have an answer in quadrant 3, and that answer is 5 pi over 4. Uh, had I asked tangent x equal negative 1, we would have gone down here and found an answer in quadrant 2, and another one in quadrant 4. So we're looking for the 45 degree angles in quadrant 1, which is pi over 4, and quadrant 3. Those are the two quadrants in which tangent is positive. And so our answers are pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And again, you should know that the tangent of 45 degrees, pi over 4 radians, is 1. And then you don't care what quadrant you're in, as long as it's the pi over 4 angle in that quadrant. And what I mean by that, again, is we're 45 degrees off the x-axis. We always come off the x-axis in quadrants 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now here we go. Sine x is equal to negative 1 over square root of 2. And 1 over square root of 2 is a little tougher to find. It's, it's right here. You have to trust me on that one. But again, you should be thinking 45 degree angles because the sine of 45 degrees is 1 over square root of 2. And it's a negative. So we want the 45 degree angle in quadrants 3 and 4. See right here? Quadrants 3, quadrant 4, because that those are the two quadrants in which sine is negative. So the 45 degree angle in quadrant number 3 is 5 pi over 4. And the 45 degree angle in quadrant number 4 is 7 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And again, we don't expect you to pull the graph out and draw lines like this and know where 1 over square root of 2 is. Uh, we expect you to know that the sine of 45 degrees is 1 over square root of 2. So you can go backwards on this and say, hey, I need a 45 degree angle. And, okay, I need it in quadrants 3 and 4 because that's where sine's negative. Had I said sine x equals a positive 1 over square root of 2, you said, okay, I need to be in quadrants 1 and 2, and you'd have been up here. There, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 is where you would have been. Pi over 4 and, what, 3 pi over 4? You'll see that one eventually. Oh, the pi over 6 angles. There's a lot of pi over 6 angles. Remember, pi is 180 degrees, so pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Now, the red ones are really the pi over 6 angles. All the other ones are just placeholders, but we start at 0. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and we're back to 2 pi, 12 pi over 6. But really, we're only talking about the ones that are exactly 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians off the x-axis, and those are those four right there. Okay, find all values in interval negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 that satisfies the equation tan x equals 1 over square root of 3 of 2. 1 over square root of 3. So we're going from here 
to here. We want all the answers here that make this a true statement. So as we're coming through here, we see an answer here and an answer here. You ought to be thinking about this is a 30 degree angle because the tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over square root of 3. And tangent is positive in quadrant 1 and it's positive in quadrant 3. I marked it right there, didn't I? And so the answer is pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. All right. And we can go back to that graph we had earlier where we showed you all the pi over 6 angles. And you'll notice that the pi over 6 angle in quadrant 1 is, well, pi over 6. And the pi over 6 angle in quadrant 3 is 7 pi over 6. Now, this was a little different range. We said negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. We've been doing 0 to 2 pi up till now, but that's just a window that we chose arbitrarily, which is kind of the window we always choose. But we can certainly move that window left, right. We can make it bigger. We can make it smaller. We can do anything we want. So if I want all the answers between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, then I only want the answers that fall in that range. And I've got to remind you, this equation has an infinite number of solutions. Now, there's a limited number of solutions in the range we provide you, but there's an infinite number of solutions. Now, let's try this. This is a little different then. This is the same range we just had, negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. When is tangent x negative 1? And again, negative 1 is right here. There's negative 1 on the y-axis. I want to go between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and I want all the answers that make it true statement. Here's one right here. There's an answer. So I want that angle. And here's an answer. So I want that angle. And you can see where I popped up here. There's that negative 1 right there. We found a solution here and a solution here because these are the two solutions between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And you should be thinking 45 degree angles. And so this angle is negative pi over 4, and this angle is 3 pi over 4. Now, had we said between 0 and 2 pi, you'd have found this one, and you'd have found this one way over here, 7 pi over 4. But 7 pi over 4 is out of range. We want this angle, which happens to be coterminal with 7 pi over 4. We want the angles between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 that make it a true statement. And in this case, that was negative pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Okay, let's sketch the graph of sine x plus 1. This is going to take the sine curve, and it's simply going to add 1 to it. Normally, the sine curve goes between negative 1 and 1. This is literally you're picking it up, you move it straight up one unit, and you drop it back down. It doesn't change the domain. It doesn't change um, the period. It does change the range because instead of negative 1 to 1, we're going from 0 to 2. You can see a 2 right there that I didn't mark. And so when we add or subtract to the sine or cosine curve, all we're doing is picking it up or moving it down. If I had minus 1, it would have dropped it straight down. Well, speaking of that, let's do sketch the graph of y equal cosine x minus 2. And so this takes the cosine curve, which usually goes between negative 1 and 1, and drops it 2 units. It doesn't change the period uh, of, the, of this curve. It doesn't change the domain. We can still do all values of x. The period is still 2 pi. It does, however, change the range. Instead of negative 1 to 1, it's going to be negative 3 to negative 1. It moved it down 2 units. So all we're doing there is just picking it up and and moving it up or moving it down. But the graph looks exactly the same. Hey, that finally concludes Lesson 7. Uh, please get to work on the homework for Lesson 7. Thank you.